Sally Shepard coming to you from Breathe Easy Wheezy at YouTube.com. Today I thought we would talk about the weather. Yes. Small talk, chick chat. Let's get it on. Actually, uh, not not in that way. We're gonna talk about how the weather affects our breathing because it does. Our lungs work on a pressure system. So inside our lungs are inside of our chest cavity or our thorax and it is negative interthoracic inside that chest cavity, negative interthoracic pressure changes that cause us to <sighs> inhale and positive interthoracic pressure changes that cause us to <sighs> exhale. So with that said, when we have swings of atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure, those of us with more severe lung disease, that can affect our breathing. Totally. So when the barometric pressure rises dramatically or drops dramatically, we're gonna feel it. So just keep that in mind. Now, we don't get to change the barometric pressure right? We don't get control over that. We don't get control over the weather. But what we do get is we get control over our expectations of ourself and what we end up doing with that day. So it took me a long time to figure out, because uh, I'm, I'm one of those people, I wake up with a list, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. This is everything I want to get accomplished today. And some days everything goes smoothly and some days my lungs are like, uh-uh, not gonna happen today. So please choose, choose wiser than what I used to do. I don't do this anymore. This hasn't happened since I was 20 years old. Uh, but what, what used to happen was I would just push through activities anyway when I wasn't breathing well. And I, even if my body was sending me signals, hey, slow down, you're short of breath, you're tired, you know, you're feeling weak, uh, you're, you're really, really short of breath, I would just kind of override that. Don't do that. <laughs> not, not a good idea. That's pretty much what landed me in the emergency room and on many occasions hospitalized. So be smarter than me. I'm sure most of you guys are. So yippee ki -yay, we don't have to worry about that, right? We can change our expectations of ourselves. So if I woke up thinking, you know, today's the day that I'm gonna vacuum the living room, I'm gonna sweep, I'm gonna dust, I'm gonna mop. Um, I don't know why anybody would wake up thinking that, but some people do. Some people like to be, um, you know, like a super clean home. I like a clean home. I just like for my children to do that. But, oh gosh, don't, don't let them see this video. Anyway, so, well, that's one of the ways that you can manage your, your lung disease is you can delegate those activities. You can see if somebody else can do those or can help those with you. Or you can say, you know what, this just isn't my best breathing day. I woke yesterday, the sun was shining, everything was clear. It had been that way for weeks. I woke up today and now it is uh, windy. Everything's blowing sideways and there's tons of rain and the pressure dropped. Uh, we can change our expectations of ourselves. So I might go, you know what? Maybe I'll sweep, but today isn't the day to mop. Maybe I'll check in and see how I feel tomorrow. And maybe I'll try to see if I can get some mopping done tomorrow. Uh, so just kind of modify your expectations on the days I really don't breathe well, which thank goodness, knock on wood. That's a far, far, far away. <laughs> oh man, set off the dog. Uh, those days I just, I change, uh, I only, I only do what it is that is absolutely necessary. So for me, that's going to the bathroom. That is feeding myself. That is getting plenty of water. That is uh, maybe taking a shower, maybe. Speaking of showers, let's talk about humidity because humidity changes as well. 
and humidity can change our breathing because when it becomes really, really humid, oxygen levels go down. So if you live up in the Pacific Northwest, that happens quite often. The humidity can get really, really high and then all of a sudden we're having a harder time breathing. A lot of, a lot of the patients that I see, they're like, oh, that's just in my head. You know, um, I, I think I must be imagining this. No, you're not. There's so many different factors that come into play with lung disease. It is not neat and tidy. And so I'm, I'm doing these videos to help you guys learn and to increase your awareness of how you're feeling and how to manage it and all the factors that can come into play and affect our breathing. So just be aware. Now, if you live up in the Pacific Northwest, let's say like Seattle, I'm just throwing that out there because it's our most well-known city here in Washington State, the humidity can fluctuate greatly. But let's say you live somewhere like San Diego or you live somewhere like Yuma, Arizona or Phoenix, Arizona, pretty doggone dry. But you will run into humidity when you take a shower. So now you know. When the humidity goes up, oxygen levels go down. So what can we do in our shower? Well, we can open a window if we have one to reduce indoor humidity. We can also turn on our ceiling fan if we have one. We can, if we don't have either one of those, we can open the bathroom door. And what that does is it allows the humidity to move out of the bathroom so it's not stuck in an enclosed space. Is it gonna make it go away completely? No, but it will reduce it. Now, one of the things I've noticed across the years of taking care of people with lung disease is a lot of people have supplemental oxygen. So they're wearing that nasal cannula and a lot of people, I, I tell them, so do you get really short of breath when you're taking a shower? Oh yeah, oh that's the worst. And I'm like, okay, so you're wearing your oxygen while you're in the shower. And they're like, you can do that? Yes, you can do that. Um, and you know, most, most of my clients, I would say they take it off. Don't take it off, leave it on because you're gonna need it. And you can just run that tubing up over your shower door or over the curtain rod, your shower curtain rod. Um, I don't know if there's any other shower options. <laughs> if there are, uh, let me know. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below, please click the subscribe button. You can do that by clicking on the little bell. Do that, do that now. That way, every time I drop a video, you know about it. You can also click like if you like my videos. Do it. It makes me feel good. It lets me know I'm moving in the right direction. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, write them down below. If you leave a question, I will get back to you. So, Kelly Shepard, I'm coming to you from Breathe Easy Wheezy on YouTube, but I also have a website, breatheeasywheezy.com. You can also email me questions at breatheeasywheezy at gmail.com. And you can find me on Instagram at breatheeasywheezy with underscores, the lower line between the, the words on Instagram and you can find me at Kelly Shepard or Breathe Easy Wheezy on Facebook. Okay? B-R-E-A-T-H-E-E-A-S-Y-W-H-E-E-Z-Y. -E 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 All right. Till the next time I see ya, breathe easy. Especially if you're wheezy. Bye y'all.